guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing the uh, chest lights and the belly lights and getting that all hooked up and getting them uh, attached to their program boards and then checking it out. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll finish up all the front lighting today. So um, let's jump into it. Guys, the next thing we're going to do are the two chest lights that are on the front of the robot. So uh, these are made by, these are the original ones from Dialite exactly like the ones that were used in the series. So if you can find these and get a hold of these, that's great. And it's just a big socket that, you know, goes into the front of the robot. Now, these take 1142 bayonet style bulbs, kind of like the ones you use in a, they used to use in cars and things years way back. Those are incandescent. So, but what I did is I went on and I got these little LEDs, which are actually colored LEDs. So this is a green one, there's also a red one which are the two that I got. I got these 1142s, but I got them in 24 volt. You can get them in 12 volt too, but I like the 24 volts because uh, when you run 12 volts through them, they're a little bit dimmer and they look really good. So, but this is what they look like. Regular base, but instead of the incandescent part being at the top here, now you have uh, LEDs and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like nine or something here. Like say two, four, six, eight, yeah, nine nine little uh, LEDs there. So these are super bright when they light up here um, inside the robot. Plus, <clears throat> it'll save power uh, off the batteries and then um, you know you don't have to worry really about it burning out either. So they're really nice. <clears throat> so you can get LED replacements instead of using the incandescents. You could use incandescents, there's nothing wrong with that, but these are really nice and bright and they're pre-colored. So you don't have to worry about it. On the series, right, the chest lights were sort of like, if you looked at a lot of the scenes, like you could barely see the, the colors of the lights, right? So these are gonna be really bright colored uh, reds and greens here. So it was actually more of a pinkish, really, but I think it was because it was just so washed out in the series. So that's uh, what we're gonna do next. Now, to control these, the blinking of this, uh, one of the club members made a module called the chest blinker and originally uh, the same guy made a module for the belly lights and inside that same module you could also control the chest lights but now he has a separate module and the nice thing about the separate module is you can control the speed of the flashing for each individual light so in other words it's not just a back and forth blinking between two lights you can actually individually control how fast each light blinks. And if you watch the series, you'll, you'll notice that the lights actually were not in sync with each other when they were blinking. It was sort of more random types of blinking. And so you can replicate that now with this little uh, module. So let me show you that. So this is the module right here. He just calls it the B9 chest flasher. And it just has two leads coming in for power. So that's just 12 volts. And then you have a plus and a minus for your left and right, which goes out to the sockets, right? And then the ground from the socket just comes back to your power supply. So, you know, as long as everything's on the same power supply, you just ground it and that's all you need. But if you noticed, it has a little LED here and it also has two little potentiometers right here that you can adjust with a little screwdriver. And so for each side, you can adjust the flashing and how fast each one goes instead of just having a static, both just going on and off, on and off, um, alternately. So he could have just made it so they just flash back and forth, but this is really nice that you have the choice to set it and you can come up with all kinds of combinations. So really cool. I recommend getting this little uh, module instead of using the main chest module and uh, you'll uh, see how it works. So you can see I have my chest lights in here. Now these, uh, the way it works is the socket gets goes into it. It has a little like ring on it that stops it. And then on the back here, you just put the, of course, the nut and the washer, and then you wire it up. And that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward with those. What's nice about these is these, these, dot, these just screw off on the front and you can replace the bulb and then just screw it back on if needed. So very easy to change it. So if you're, if you do buy the LED and it burns out for some reason, you could easily change it without tearing any part of the inter inner side of the robot apart, okay? So let me power this up and we'll take a look at what they look like. 
All right, so there you go. So you can see each one is blinking and they're just blinking alternately right here. But that's the green one right there. The camera kind of washes it out. In person, it's a much darker green. And then the same thing with the red. In person, it's much brighter, red and green. It looks like red and green stoplights in person, but you know, pretty much that's, that's what it looks like. Now, each one of these, I could change the speed at which it blinks. So it doesn't have to be exactly like it is right now, just going back and forth. But super cool, works really well, and I highly recommend you buy that little module. And uh, that's all there is for the chest lights. They're, they're pretty straightforward. So the next thing to take care of on the front of the robot are, it's the last set of lights we have to deal with, and that is the belly lights. So there's 12 of those belly lights, and they're, they're just these sockets right here. These are Sylvania. These are old, old school, old time uh, sockets, Sylvania. They made these sockets and they put them in everything way back in the day. Like everything in the world had these sockets in them. So cars, uh, you know, commercial vehicles, anything you needed a light for to indicate something, they use these Sylvania sockets. Okay, these were used for decades and decades, right? I'm not, I don't think they make them anymore at this point, but back in the day, these were so popular. So you should have no problem finding a set of these, but in addition to those, you're gonna need uh, the little lenses that screw onto the sockets, and there's different colors uh, based on the season that you're doing in the robot, so uh, you'll need those. And then they just take a, uh, a bulb. It's, now these are incandescent bulbs. Um, let me see if I can find them. And uh, yeah, so it's just these uh, normal bayonet, bayonet type bulbs right here. I don't even know, I'd have to, let me see. I don't think they even say on the side of them, yeah. I'm not even sure what size these actually are, but I'm sure if you went on the, uh, uh, actually, let me go look in the, um, I think they might be in the uh, guide here for the uh, board that goes with this. Let me see if he, he indicates what kind of lights they are. Uh, da, da, da. Cause he, he gives you the light bulbs with it so, oh, number 47 bulbs. So these are number 47s, okay? 47 bayonet bulbs. These are little incandescent bulbs. So uh, I, I didn't go research to see if um, LEDs were available for this, but this one's a little bit different because his board uses diodes and everything. So I'm not sure if LEDs would work or not, but um, basically uh, we're just gonna use these little incandescents because they're not gonna take much power if you think about it because they're just flashing on and off. They're not on all the time. They're constantly flashing on and off for just a split second. So I don't think I have to worry about power drain or anything like that with these. So I am gonna use the normal incandescents in the belly lights. So they're the same kind of way. They just have a, <clears throat> you know, a washer and a nut. This goes through the hole. The, the lip stops it from going through and then you just put the nut and screw it on. What's nice about the ones I have here, and they came in different, sort of different versions over the years, but these have a nice uh, spade going out that I can slide a spade uh, connector on there. I don't have to solder anything or do anything. So, and that's nice if I ever need to change one or do anything with it. So, uh, but however you do it, that's fine. That's, that's, that's the way it works. So. Okay, so now what we have to do is uh, mount them in there and then put our bulbs and lenses in. <clears throat> so there you go, There's I've got all my uh, um, sockets mounted. I got my bulbs inside of it and then I put my lenses on. Now the, the uh, lenses, the colors of the lenses, they change them around depending on the season and the episode that you watch. So there is really no one way to put these in, to be honest with you, because they changed them all the time. And my guess is it's because when they were changing burnt out bulbs, they were just taking them off, putting bulbs in and just throwing them back anywhere. It didn't really matter, right? So if you look at different episodes, you'll see it changes all the time. Um, this is based off the first season of season two, I think, and because uh, that's the color season when they started doing the show in color, and I just sort of replicated that portion of it. 
Um, now they used a oh, sort of a solid opaque color yellow in one of the sockets. Kind of looks like, uh, if you look on the camera here, it looks like this. It wasn't a translucent one, it was like a solid one. Um, which went right here where I have a translucent yellow one. I like all translucent ones better. I don't really like those solid ones. It looked weird. It kind of stood out and was kind of strange. So I decided just to go all translucent on mine just to make it look better. I think it looks uh, a lot better. And I did, uh, I think on one of these, I, I added an extra, there was only one green. I added an extra green because I thought it, there was too many of the amber yellow ones. So. So I switched it around a little bit, but you can make whatever you want depending on the lenses that you have. But that's kind of what it looks like. So now what we have to do is start wiring this up. And this is this one gets a little complicated. Uh, so we have to hook this up to a special board that's going to control these and control all the blinking. Here's the board that it's going to control it. Again, the same club member that makes the chest flasher makes this board right here. And basically, uh, you've got uh, eight wires coming off of this thing. Actually, ten if you consider the power wires right here. So you're going to have your two power wires for uh, 12 volts coming into here. And then you're going to have four wires on what he calls the row and four wires on the column. Okay, And so all these will get connected to a certain combination of the lights on the front. And that's how, and then the board controls the sequence and how the lights flash. And there's little dip switches right here that you can use while you're testing for testing purposes to flip things on to see the different combinations. But the way the board works actually is by these little uh, terminals right here on the board where you can solder a wire. And then when you ch take one of those and you ground it against the ground pin, it will trigger a certain sequence. So the dip switches are really just for testing purposes and things like that. You're gonna use the uh, actual terminals here to trigger different things. So in other words, what you could do is uh, you could either put them on a switch to switch around the way the belly lights work or say like when I'm doing the soil sampler, I could program it so that when it does the soil sampler, it also triggers one of these grounds it, and then the lights will change in a different pattern. So it'll kind of look like, okay, you push the button to activate the soil sampler, and then the soil sampler is doing its thing, so he's processing the information, and you can make the lights change from the normal just random flashing to maybe a circular uh, flow or something like that. So this board is really cool also, and um, but it is the wiring on it is sort of complicated, and you have to follow the instructions exactly or you'll fry the board, okay? So, and you can see that we've got eight wires. They're all different as far as their color coding goes. And that's gonna be important when you actually start wiring everything up. So let's go look at the how this is actually wired up. When you wire up the lights, obviously there's two sides, two terminals on each um, socket, right? So here it's depicting all 12 sockets right here, and you're looking at from the inside of the robot towards the front, right, where you're seeing the terminals. So you, first of all, one side is going to be the negative side, one's the positive. So when I put the sockets in, um, <clears throat> the blade on the side of the terminal actually had a little plus on it. So I don't know if you probably can't see it on here, but this actually has a little plus right there. And I just took a Sharpie, a red Sharpie, and I just marked it so I could tell once they're in the robot which one was plus and minus. So on the minus side, what you're going to do is you can see they're in, in groups. Uh, there's three groups <clears throat> of four. So all you're going to do on the minus side is connect them all together just in a big loop. And then there'll be a, there'll be a, a wire coming off of here, sort of like... Uh, Get a pen here. Okay. So you're going to connect them all together, and then you know, your, your feed's going to come off there, off of here, right? So that's the negative side. So you're going to have three wires for all 12 lights. Because you're just hooking these all up together. Okay. So all I did is I took a wire, right? Put a terminal on that one. 
and then I went to the next wire and I put the two wires together in a terminal. Same thing over there and then a terminal on the end, right? So they kind of loop to each other, basically. And, uh, you know, each one is powered, right? So even, you know, it's not going to affect anything if a bulb burns out or anything like that. Okay, that one, that single one just wouldn't light. But they're not in series, they're basically in parallel. So basically, uh, I have three wires now coming out. So let me go show you what that looks like on the inside. So this, this is the easiest side to wire up, the negative side. It's probably hard to see, right, because I'm filming this from the top. But you can see on the negative side how they're just jumped from each negative side to each other. And then there's one wire that comes off, right? So I've got three of them. I got yellow, green, and red. So I color-coded them so I know which group is which group. And because it's important because each of these three wires has to go to very specific colored wire on that row connector that I was talking about before. So you have to make sure you get the right ones hooked up to the right ones or it won't work correctly. And if you short something, it's going to burn it out. So it's very important that you check and double check this wiring before you even try to power this up. But so you can see they're just sort of looped together there and that's pretty much it. So right now I have all the negative uh, hooked up and I've got three leads coming out of there for the negative side. So for the positive side of the light, this is called the column side, uh, you're going to have four wires. So again, the wires will come off these sections that you create right here, right? To go to the, the uh, feeds that are going to connect to the board, right? But what you're going to do is, and you can see, again, it's the same 12 in the same order, but you're going to put the wires right on the positive side right here between you see how it's every other one so basically this one you skip that you do this one skip that do this one and then on the bottom row you do the opposite right for the other uh three all right so for each of these again it's in groups of three lights and but this time because we have the four different ones right we are going to uh, separate them out to yellow, green, red, and blue, right? And you're going to have those. Now, and then each of these particular wires goes to a very specific wire that's coming off that connector for the columns. And he has it in the book right here, uh, in his instructions, I should say, at the top, where it kind of just says, to tell it tells you which one goes with which. So, for instance, the orange section right here that I'm pointing to, right, which I, I'm calling yellow, is actually up here and it says this one would connect to the red and blue striped wire. Okay, and then the green one is connecting to the gray and yellow, blue, blah, 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 right? So it te he tells you which ones to connect it to on the board itself. Now there's one little extra step that you have to do though before you can connect these and that is <clears throat> it needs a diode uh, in place. So let me go back here. So on the positive side <clears throat> of the socket, we need to put a diode, right? So because the diode uh, will just make sure that the power can only go the one direction, right? And that's really the whole deal with the processor. And if you don't do this correctly, this is what, what's going to damage your board, right? So, um, you know, he's got some examples here, but basically you're attaching the diode here. The direction of the diode is important. It has a little stripe on it, so that stripe goes towards the socket. And for each one of these sockets, you create a diode, you uh, put a diode in the mix before you attach it to the board. So that's, it's between the, the diode is basically between the, um, uh, wire here that you see going to each light, right? So right here, here, and here would be a diode before you get up to the main wire that's going to go back to the board. So every single socket has to have a diode on it. And that's the key to the whole thing. And then he also has a section right here where there's an extra wire for the programming bay. Uh, and you can see before we used to have also for the chest lights but we don't we don't need to use these in my case we're just going to use the programming bay one which is that little yellow light in the programming bay that flashes on and off as the robots functioning okay 
So, and then the programming bay has a positive side, same thing, and it's gonna need a diode on it, okay? Once you do that, then you're gonna just check, double check, and triple check your wiring, right, before you even bother powering it up. So, what I'm gonna do, uh, cause I really, uh, he gives you everything you need in the kit, right? So like here's the diodes. But what I did is I'm putting the diodes like this. So I'm creating these little connections with the diodes on them. And this, so instead of soldering these to the light, I'm just gonna use a terminal connect to the light and that connects to the diode. And then this will connect out to that feed that goes out on the previous page right here. So this feed right here. So this diode would basically connect like that to this wire and then this one wire goes back to the board. Okay, but every light has to have a diode on it first. So basically all these diodes are gonna connect to a single wire that's gonna go out to the board. Okay, but I have to make one of these for every single light. So that means I have to make 12 of these and I'm making them in the four different colors that I have, which in my case is a yellow wire, I don't have orange wire, green, red, and blue, which I have all those. So we're gonna use that as my, and you can see I've created a bunch of them so far right here, okay? And then these will just plug in the back. And that way if anything should ever happen, and let's say the diode goes bad for some reason or something happens, I can actually just pop this off the back of the um, socket and replace it, right? Instead of, you know, if I solder this on, that's a big pain because then uh, if I solder the diode onto the socket, because then what happens is if, if I need to replace it ever, now I got to go in there with soldering iron and stuff like that. And it's just not in a great accessible area. You'd almost have to take the sockets out of the robot on the front. And, you know, when you do that, when you have the sockets on the robot like this, especially after you've just painted something, even though the paint is dry to the touch. When you tighten this down, it actually puts a little dent in the paint, right? So if you try to pull this off, it's probably gonna first stick a little bit and may actually pull some paint off or uh, leave a little indentation. And when you put it back, you may see that depending if you put it back exactly the same in the right spot. So it's better if you never have to take these sockets out and you just uh, can fix whatever you need to do by making a disconnection on the back of the sockets, which is why I like these because you can see I can put this, it's really tight connection to, okay, on the back of the socket. And if I ever need to replace this, I just pull it off and then I can replace it. So that's just my suggestion. You don't have to do that. If you want to solder it, feel free, but I think that'll work. So. So my next step is actually to get all these created and get this uh, set up so that I have four wires coming off of here. So I'll end up with seven wires for the belly lights. And then I'll have the last wire, which will be the eighth wire, will be the programming bay wire right here, okay? So that's what we'll have when, we, when it all you know ends up in that, um, section. So if you notice the programming bay right here, also it says orange goes to red and blue, right? It's the same one for the main lights. So basically what's going to happen here is um, it's going to go to this same uh, feed right here. So still, still only four feeds going back to the board, right? It's just got the uh, programming bay is going to tie into that one. And this one is just going to be a separate one, actually, uh, that goes back to the blue-black wire. So, in a wall, everything coming back to the board is still going to be eight wires total. It's just that on the ground you have three and then four, okay, one for the programming bay. And then on the lights right here, it's all four. And this, this one ties into that one of these over here. So still end up with eight wires total, and then they all get connected back to that board. And then once you have it all connected and you verify it a couple times, and what I mean by that is just follow your wires through and make sure because the striped color coding on these is, can get very confusing really easy. And I 
am gonna write them down as I do them. I'm gonna just put them on a piece of paper, do a checklist, mark down exactly what I'm seeing and then what it connects to to verify that I got everything correct. All right, so what happens is here, uh, in the little first page here, he has sort of this lamp matrix, which kind of shows you, you know, for the rows and columns, how each wire is connecting which lights, right? And that's how the processor kind of works when it's controlling the different uh, sequences. All right, so we've got our uh, diodes all wired up here. So you can see that this would connect to the socket, comes to the diode, diode then goes out to the feed. So the diode should be going this direction for the feed. So what I'm doing is I'm using a 12 volt power supply and I am, as you can see right here, and all I'm doing is feeding through the feed here, 12 volts. And on this side then, uh, I'm gonna use my multimeter to see if I get 12 volts DC, which I'll put right there. So on the um, other side of the power supply, I have the negative over here on this terminal. So if I put on this terminal, what should happen down here on the display is I should get 12 volts, which I do, I get 11.7, okay? If I reverse this, then I'm gonna take that off of there, take this off here. Actually, leave that on there, just reverse it. I'm gonna put the power at the other side and then touch this and I should get nothing, which you can see right now I'm getting, if you can see that, 0 0.2, which is basically just transient stuff. So basically nothing. So that means my diode is in the correct position. Power's coming one direction through it and that's it. It's not going backwards. So uh, what you wanna do is take all 12 of these little things that you just created here and go ahead and test them all first. Then what I do once I'm, I got them tested is I'm gonna take this little section right here that you see with the diode in it, and I'm just gonna put some black cloth around it to hold this sort of together like that, and that's gonna be it, okay? And then these are gonna plug into the lights, and then all three of these will get joined together into one feed going out. So, a little work, more work to do, but let me uh, first test all these to make sure, first of all, the diodes are okay, they're all working correctly, and then, I'll do my final joining of the three leads together on each one, and we'll be ready to plug these into the lights inside the robot. And then at that point, then we're ready to start hooking it up to the actual board. All right, so that's what my final uh, pairs look like here. So you can see, you know, they got my three light leads right here, and then they all connect together to one single wire right there. And I tested them all. Tested them all after I got them all together. Tested them again after I wrapped them with the cloth tape. So tested like four times just to make sure. I did find one where I accidentally cut through one of the wires. So it wasn't making a connection at all. So um, I fixed that one. So test and retest is all I can say. and Make sure that the current flows just one direction and you should be good. So now I have all four of my colors ready to go for the positive side. So next I'm gonna attach these to the actual sockets and then we will be ready because now we'll have seven wires coming up. I haven't done the uh, programming bay light yet, but uh, we'll try just the seven to see if we can get the belly lights working correctly. And we're gonna attach them to the board. All right, so there it is all hooked up and there's the, the uh, lights flashing. So this is just the default, it's sort of random. But you can use the uh, dip switches on the board over here. So these little tiny switches right there to do some testing and basically see what the difference is. So you can see sort of how they're blinking right now. There's a dip switch that speeds it up. So if I use that one and turn it on, you can see how they're blinking much faster now. So you can use that as a test. If I change it to another one, you can see how the pattern sort of changed. It's like, it's like three of them or two of them going around in bunches, right? There's another alternate pattern right there. And I think there's a chase pattern. 
Yep, that's like number two here. So there you go. There's a little chase pattern going around. And I can uh, speed it up. Okay. So you have all kinds of choices here on the board, which is really cool. All right, so you are able to then control these with a ground, actually. So let's go look at that. All right, so on the board here, you can see you have those little dip switches, and that's how you can play with each one of them and force it to go into a pattern and check it out. But when you want to use it with the robot, you're going to use these little terminals right here. So you're just going to solder a wire on each one of these. And then all you're going to do to make it activate is ground it. And so you can make the light pattern change in front of the robot based on grounding one of those wires. So in other words, let's say I operate the soil sampler and I want it to do the chase pattern to make it look like it's processing something or whatever. You can, you could, I could ground that particular pin when I ground the wire for the soil sampler and then at the same time it will change that pattern when the soil sampler is running and then when the soil sampler is not running anymore it'll go back to its normal pattern so you have a bunch of patterns that you can choose from instructions that come with the board right it'll kind of tell you what each of the pin does so you've got the ground pin and then you got five pins to choose from and then when you ground each one of those kind of what it does you know when you ground it and that's how you'll eventually program all your stuff. So on that board, probably what I'll do is, um, you know, solder some wires onto the board and then just run them up top. So I don't know where I'm going to use them yet, but they'll be there in case I ever want to trigger any one of these types of uh, things. And then you're good. All right, so there's the final uh, light show on the front here. I even got the programming bay light going here. So everything's all finished and we basically made a cord here as you can see that comes up and then there's a quick disconnect right here so and we're using the connector so when we need to do, disconnect the torso we can but so far everything's so good. Alright guys, well that's going to be it for the uh, front uh, lighting there. We got the chest lights, we got the um, chest buttons and the belly lights and everything's all functional there. So, And we got the programming bay light going on too. So all functional on the front, so we're getting there. So uh, come back for the next video. I think we're going to be, um, we're working on some wiring. We're going to show you how we're going to route all this wiring throughout the body and then uh, I think our next step would be the amplifier volume control and microphone. So we got a couple things before we can get to the final thing, which is the big neon in the front here, but we're getting close. So uh, as always, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, uh, put your comments down below about this video, and I'll see you guys on the next B9 robot build video. Peace, guys.